In this tutorial, we're going to introduce you to the Vector Based Screen Editor, or VBSE. The VBSE is used to develop display screens for all of our newer and future displays, such as the DP720 and the DM line of displays. It replaced the classic editor used with the older displays. The VBSE represents a great improvement in ease of use over the classic editor and is particularly distinguished in terms of reusability. Screens developed on one platform can be easily migrated to and resized for any other display using the VBSE. Let's start by creating a new screen definition in the VBSE. We could start from scratch by adding new images, text, and lines, but to emphasize the reusability aspect of the VBSE, we'll start by importing some previously developed screen definitions, which we'll use as subscreens or widgets in our new screen. First, create the new screen where we'll be inserting our widgets. Right click on Screen Definitions in the Project Manager and select Add Screen Definition. Change the name to something meaningful. Now we'll import our widgets. Right click on Screen Definitions and select Import Screen. Now we can select Exported Definition or ESD files. These are just screen definitions which have been previously developed and could have been downloaded from the Danfoss library or exported earlier from your own projects. Here we'll import a gauge, a switch, and an LED indicator. Double clicking on any of our screen definitions will bring up the screen editor. We'll click on our newly created screen definition, which will open up a blank screen. All of our definitions, new and imported, are listed in the Definitions tab. We can add our subscreen definitions or widgets to our new top level screen by just dragging them in. We'll drag in a couple instances of our gauge widget and resize them. We'll then add an instance of our switch and LED indicator, duplicate them a few times, align and distribute. If we look in the Screen Manager tab of our new screen definition, we'll see our widgets for the three gauges, LEDs, and toggles that we've added. You can see that each instance has its own individual input and output signals. For instance, each gauge will have its own input value to drive the needle, as well as max and min values. It also has an enabled or disabled value. These are values that we generate in our guide program, probably putting each of them on their own individual bus for clarity. Notice that to change a widget, we have to change the screen definition on which it's based. For instance, if we wanted to move the text box higher in our gauge, we couldn't do it in the new screen. We'd have to go to the original definition and change it there, after which it will be changed in all of the instances of that widget in our project.
Remember that a widget is just a screen definition used within another screen definition. For example, the new screen that we just created could be used as a widget itself. We can easily create a new screen definition and then drag in two instances of our just created screen as widgets. So we said that widgets, or screen definitions in general, have input signal definitions from our guide code to make them dynamic. Let's see how that works. Opening our guide code, we have some signals generated in our code that we want to drive our widgets, with the inputs for each widget arranged on a subbus for easy readability. This will also make it easier for the widget interface to know which signal goes with which widget value but you can always configure it manually. Here we have driving signal values for three gauges and three LED widgets. So the first thing we have to do is invoke an instance of our screen definition, the one we created earlier. Drag in a show screen component. Note that the one show screen component has replaced the two components in the classic editor, define areas page and define screen page. The show screen component tells guide that an instance of a screen definition will be called at this point in our code, although we still haven't told guide which one. Remember that guide code execution order is respected here, so if we had two show screen components, one on top of the other, both enabled, the top one would be called first, and then the second, which would be placed on top of the first. Since we only have one top-level screen, we'll set the show screen signal to be always on, but this would obviously be activated and deactivated for displays with multiple screens. At this point, we want to tell Guide which signal definition to call here, and send it the signal values that it needs. Do a Q query on the show screen component. Select the screen definition we want and then select definition. You can see all the signal values that we sent on to the bus arranged by subbuses. All those values are available and in this case we want them all passed to our screen for use in our widgets. Select them all and click apply and then edit definition. We see that the signal inputs are now available in the screen definition, and we could attach them one by one. Remember, though, that we've done some prep work arranging widget values onto logical subbuses. That will allow the screen editor to help us make the connections. If we right click on the widget and select Edit Object Interface, Guide will look for a subbus with signal values appropriate for the widget and present us with those connections already made as an option, after which we can just select Make Connection and be done. So that's the idea of using widgets in the vector-based screen editor. But what if you don't have any widgets, either ones developed internally by you or that you downloaded from Danfoss? Well, in that case, you have to build your screen definition from scratch, which we'll look at now. But remember, a screen definition is itself a widget, so keep in mind that when you're building your screen, it only has to be built once and then can be used over and over in subsequent projects. So if we're building screen definitions from scratch, we start once again with our new screen definition. From here, things will seem familiar, but improved to users of the classic screen editor. On the right-hand side of the screen editor, we'll find our screen library. This contains screen assets that we can drag in to build our screen, the primary ones being images, text, and lines. You can add new assets by doing a right click and then selecting individual or multiple files to import. 
Each asset can be used multiple times in the same or different screens. Each time an asset is used, it will have a number of modifiable characteristics associated with it. These characteristics are viewed in the Inspector tab on the left. For each characteristic, there is usually a constant value and a signal value. Use the constant value if the image or text is static. Use the signal value to make it dynamic. For instance, attach a signal to the X insertion point value to move the image horizontally on the screen. Or attach a signal to the rotation value to rotate a gauge needle. The signal values can come either from your guide program, routed in on the bus to the show screen component, or they can come from a POU. For text values, we type in our text, and for every dynamic value, we give it a placeholder of the type percent sign, then a number, and then dollar sign. Formatting settings for each data value are set below. We can then find that text in our screen manager, and we'll find a data value for each placeholder that we had in our text. We can then attach a signal value to that data value. A note on image types for those who have been using the classic screen editor. The vector-based screen editor accepts all the image types used in the classic editor, such as bitmap and PNG, but also vector graphics. The VBSE also allows you to import multiple images at the same time and to export the entire library or parts of it for use in other projects. Remember we said at the beginning of the tutorial that one of the best things about the vector-based screen editor was the ability to easily reuse content. Let's say that we built some gauges, sliders, and other screen assets using our company's branding for a screen, and of course we want to have similar looking gauges on our other machines. We can do this in a couple of clicks as long as we're moving from one VBSE platform to another, for instance from the DP720 to the DM430. Do a right click on the screen definition that we just created and select Export Screen Definition. In the new project, select Import Screen Definition. You might have to answer a few questions if there are folder or file naming conflicts, but then you're ready to use that screen definition by itself or as a widget within another screen. We hope that this is enough information to get you started working with the vector-based screen editor. 
In the interest of keeping the tutorial to a manageable length, we've left off a number of important topics, including using touch capabilities, the layout manager, adding POUs to your widget, and adding additional languages. These will be covered in separate videos, as will the state machine approach of handing multiple screens in the same application. We hope that you found this tutorial useful. Remember that Plus One Community Help is available on the Plus One User Forum at plusoneforum.danfoss.com or contact the Plus One Help Desk at Plus One Help Desk, P L U S plus sign, the digit one Help Desk at danfoss.com. Thank you for your attention.